All right, Matt Gannon, jurors, we are back. It is Masters week. But before we get into the Masters, once I uh, do the timestamps here, this is going to say Vic lapping underneath uh, the YouTube video. And if you're if you're on Spotify or Apple, you'll see it down there because it's Vic lap season. Tickets for both of the boys this week. Akshay for me at the Valero Texas Open. Dean Burmester at Live. Miami for you. You had boots on the ground to live Miami. How was your weekend? How's the uh, boots on the ground? How are you doing? Yeah, congrats on that Akshay ticket. Great call. Very sweaty. I know you were, you literally said it in the morning. You were like, this is going to be the worst loss ever because the, the everything that happened. But yeah, so great, great win. Live Miami was very cool. Doral, amazing golf course. Need to, The PGA Tour needs to get back there. Uh, so it was cool to be there on Thursday, uh, Friday. The the live vibes were as expected. Live Miami, as picture live Miami, it was that. So yeah, but it was cool to be there. Awesome golf course. Uh, Dean got the win, cash the ticket. So good week for us both. Yeah, the thing about uh, the vibe down there in Miami, just seeing it on TV, like it's gotten to the point of the year. I grew up in Washington. I lived in Seattle for a long time. Like I can accept bad weather. That you can't phase me with extended periods of rain or gray. But since I've moved to New York, the weather's actually been pretty good here. This time of year, though, has been the worst time of year in the few years I've lived in New York. When I was watching Live Miami and just seeing the vibe, it's been the first yeah. time watching golf. Because, like, obviously, golf is in a nice place most of the time. Like, that's how golf rolls. But this was the first time where I was, like, flipping it on. And even in the weather in San Antonio was terrible, too. And, like, you'd flip over to Miami, and it was just like, damn, the vibe looks uh, immense. Yeah, the vi- I mean, the vibes are just always good down here. That's why I fucking moved down here. But, yeah, it was cool. It was hot. Uh, a lot of girls out there. It was, it was a good time. <laughs> Let's uh let's do some Valero, then we'll quickly talk live, and then obviously we'll get in the Masters because I'm sure there's people listening who who could give a shit about what took place at uh, the Valero. But I think there's you know, and we did this uh, before players. You want to look at the tournament when some guys played the week before and get a sense of how things are going. We'll start with Akshay because he obviously earns his ticket uh, into the Masters this week with his performance. And we talked about last week one of the things that was a weird key at Valera was just coming in white hot with the irons off of a previous start. And that is exactly what Akshay he led the field in Crazy. previous appearance, best approach. He'd gained eight strokes in Houston. And the man flushes the golf ball. The man is a absolute ball striking machine. I've been trying to think of who his comp is. And for me, he reminds me of Colin and he shares the crossover win at Barracuda early in his career with Colin. Now he comes to a ball striking course and wins lives in the fairways has pop. Like he was hitting some drive. He was so far ahead yep. of like, serious pop serious, but he doesn't necessarily use it. And I was reading too. That's something he learned was like, I want to lay back a little bit off the tee because I'm such a good iron player, but he was playing with short hitters and Henley and Todd and he was miles, miles by them yeah. on every hole. But I, br- I bring up the call and comp just because like he lives in the fairways and has spike upside with the iron play. The short game is a little sketchy touch and go, but like he wanted a course that call and one at he plays to the iron play strength. And we're just not seeing a lot of guys on tour right now who are amazing iron players. Like there's not a lot of guys who are gaining seven, eight, nine strokes. And we'll talk about that for Augusta. He seems like a guy who just has elite level upside with his iron play. Yeah, and he's parlayed that the last few weeks. And we, like you said last week, you need to have elite iron form. He's coming in off of the best iron week of his career in Houston. And it, it wasn't a, a pick that you had to dive deep into the weeds to find. It was pretty clear, and you capitalized on it. So cheers to Akshay. Happy to see him in Augusta this week. And at the end of the day, Augusta makes sense for a guy like Akshay. I, I know there's a lot more that goes into it than just course fit, but cool to see him here. He's a fan favorite. So it was a great win, a very sweaty win, and well-deserved. Yeah, it was the thing was like obviously he played well all week. I think he was the first guy in like a long ass time to be leading by three strokes after every single round. I think JT right. at the Sony when he shot 59 was the last person to do it. And I'm I feel so cursed that even when going into the final round, I was like, he's gonna lose, something bad's gonna happen. But when you have a six shot lead with nine holes to go, and then you shoot two under on the back nine, like he had a couple short missed putts, but he didn't do anything. Like if you have a six shot right. lead, he played how you would want somebody to play with a six shot lead. Denny McCarthy. With the most Denny McCarthy performance in the history, couldn't write it better. Couldn't write it better. Eight birdies on the back nine. As it was happening, you could even see. I, I actually, you could see it with him too. It was just like, what am I supposed to do? Like every exactly. single putt that he stood over, he was going to make, and then he does all of that just to flub a wedge into the creek on eighteen. I know you're a Denny guy. You love Denny. I, I, I don't mean, know if we're going to say that. 
uh you anyone who bets denny under 20 to 1 in any in any tournament which i believe you did at the uh, john <laughs> deere becomes a denny guy so what was your take you obviously i was pissed the entire time i wanted nothing more than for denny to stop doing what he was doing but from an outside perspective not having a ticket in the fight what was your take on what he did yesterday I mean, you couldn't have had a more Denny performance because he does. I mean, 28, he doesn't do regularly, but he'll have those three to four birdie runs. Like you'll just look at a scorecard. Oh, Denny birdied five holes in a row. He he will do that from time to time. And in that fashion, he'll chip in something like that, make a ton of long putts. Could not have had a better scripted Denny performance. Does that in the back nine, shoots 28, and has a, the most stock of stock wedges you could possibly draw up. 100-yard shot to a very – a bull pin, a very accessible pin – and when he hit it, I thought it was. I thought he. I thought he put it on the plateau. I thought it was up top because he yeah. put his foot down. I was like, oh, it's, he might not catch the ridge. Fifty yards short in the water, a shot that you or I would probably hit at TPC San Antonio. Like you don't see pros hit that shot. That was incredibly bad. Like he had to have hit a full inch behind the ball. That was unreal. Truthfully, unreal. Yeah, I mean, like, obviously at that point, I was still, honestly, I was happy at that point because, like, before he hit, because it had gone so wrong for Akshay, or not wrong for Akshay, obviously, Denny just made that run. And then Akshay hit, I thought it was over. I was like, he was going going to 18 after he missed that short putt on 17. I was like, we're toast. This sucks. It's over. And then, obviously, as soon as Denny stood over his putt on 18, I'm like, he's going to make it. He's made every single putt. And I had no hope that Akshay was going to make it. Fucking clutch putt from Akshay. Like, that, that's some serious stones to make that. Yeah. Like, my dad is a, he watches the golf he follows. He knows I'm into it. Like, he's not a huge fan. But, like, he texts me. He's like, that's one of the most clutch putts I've ever seen anybody make. Just because he had seen, like, the, the, the comeback guy, by yeah. Denny and that. And I agree with him. Like, that was insane. And so, at that point, I was like, whatever. He's probably still going to lose. But at least he didn't get, like, beat on 18. I jumped off the couch when Denny hit in the water because my, my brain exploded. I was like, how did that happen? Like, he could hit a thousand balls from there, and I don't think he'd hit more than one into the water. Like, what was your reaction when you saw the camera, like, pan over to the water? Because I at first you saw him hit a bad shot. You didn't think it was, like, that bad, right? No, I saw him, like, he clearly, I, I could tell he hit it heavy. Like, I didn't think he nuked it long. Yeah. Like, up, but I thought it was going to be, like, front of the green, like, 60 feet away, you know, or something like that. I, yeah. There was no world where it went into, the, or I thought it maybe it was going to hit the green and there was a chance it could roll back, roll, like, in the water. But when it just went clean in, I actually was worried that it was going to hit a rock and bounce up. Yeah, me green. too. Me and too. If, if that had happened, there would be no pod today because I would be 100% done uh, with golf betting. But Akshay gets it done. I mean, these guys were nine shots ahead of third place. Yeah. Have we ever seen anything like this before? This was, it was truly an unbelievable day of golf. True. Yeah. We haven't seen anything like that since the open with Phil, but that was tr like, yeah, that was unreal. Truly unreal. So <laughs> imagine if you, what would, if you would have lost Denny in that fashion, I couldn't even imagine. So happy we're not at that point. Happy we're talking about it because it, it is hilarious. I also want to do a quick aside here. We'll talk about the bigger names uh, in a second that are in, in the Masters and, and how they played. But I, would like to see Brendan Todd. I like Brendan Todd. We saw Brendan Todd at the players. We followed him. We like Brendan Todd. We're Brendan Todd guys. He should yeah. be suspended from the PGA Tour, maybe for the rest of the year. What he Can did... You this to me? I didn't really see You didn't it. see it? Okay, they're on 18. Uh, they hit it. Every player lays up on 18. They're all down the right side. They're waiting to hit to the green. They come. They go to commercial. They like come back. Brendan Todd is the first to play into the green. He's like 120 out. He took at least three minutes, at least like they, they kept showing him. Then they'd cut away and like, look at Denny and Oxley, like standing there to try to build up the moment. They cut back to him. He was still standing there talking. He goes to hit stand over. He steps off. He's talking to his cat. He's opened up his yardage book. It's like, bro, hit the ball. Like I, I, I get it. You're playing for whatever T five T seven, but like, dude, it was what egregious. Are you do like it was one of the most egregious things. I've I saw people it. tweeting about it. So it was, I genuinely like, I'm not even joking. I want him suspended <laughs> because it was like, you have some common sense. No one is watching Brendan Todd golf period, let alone ever. And now in this moment when it's so they're nine shots ahead of third place, they're like 10, 11 shots ahead of you. They've been kicking your ass all day. Get out of the way, man. Like it was horrible. It was awful. And yeah, was he in the rough or was he in the fairway? He was in the rough. Like, again, it's okay. You want to take a little bit of time. That's fine. Right. I but mean, yeah, it was, it was one of the longest I think I've ever seen anyone to hit in any situation. Yeah. And in that moment, it's like, 
it kind, of, plays. Come on, it kind of was like the epitome of what's wrong with the tier. You have a guy like Brendan Todd who's making 10 times the money he should ever make because no one's ever turned into golf to watch Brendan Todd play golf before. <laughs> and now you have this marquee moment where you're trying to like show this up and coming star and Denny's playing the greatest back nine in the history of golf. And then we get four to five minutes of having to watch Brendan Todd stand there. It was disgusting. Tough scene. Tough scene for B Todd. <laughs> Uh, so, and I, I don't believe B Todd will be at the Masters, so we do not need to uh, take any deeper on B Todd. But uh, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, he'll probably be back soon enough, and uh, we'll be on him then. But Roy McRoy, minus eleven, third place, not week. even close to winning. All write-ups Deep about Rory should have to include because you know all the write-ups about Rory are played great. T3. His form coming into Augusta, T three was struggling a little bit, but now is playing well. Uh, he lost in nine shots to Akshay Batia, who obviously a great player, but not a world beater up to this point of his career. And Denny McCarthy was literally never won on the PGA Tour. It's a fine performance, but he also was hitting some horrific shots. The, yeah. the miss is still in play. What, what was your take? I know you're you're considering him this week, but what was your thoughts there? He hits, I mean, we see a lot of Rory shots because he's Rory, but he hits a lot of bad shots. <laughs> Left, right, bad wedges miss putt like he hits a ton of bad shots and i do think it's amplified because he's on camera more than anyone like i said but for him to play that bad i think the t3 is good is what i'll say i think him finishing in third place in relation to the field for him not playing i think it's a c game c minus game and he still gained strokes in the field still did what he had to do to finish t3 so i'm a worried guy like you know so i'm not saying it's a horrible performance i still don't think i still think he's live this week truthfully you're going to be surprised by what I'm about to say because okay, no one it. likes to shit on Rory in majors and at the masters more than me. I think every year for about a decade, I, I've said Rory has no chance to win. I was surprised when I opened up the stats this morning because his approach play was actually really good, which was mm-hmm. surprising because I don't remember him hitting any good shots. Like every time, right. they, every saying, time they man. showed him, I swear it was bad, but it was actually, he was just wasn't hitting the fairway. He was kind of hitting it off the planet from the tee, but the iron play was actually really good. And he obviously went and worked with Butch uh, a couple weeks ago before this. I was planning on coming on the pod. I I mean, I have a list of guys we'll get to in a while that I'm going to say I have no chance to win. I'm not going to put Rory in my no chance to win category. I, I, the stats, I like what I saw. I like the background to that being the fact that he worked with Butch. It's not just like some random week. There may be this trend. Now, does he have the heart, the guts to win the Masters? Probably not. I don't think I'm going to bet him. But the statistical profile is good enough that I can't sit here and say that he can't win the Masters. So I'm sure you're, you're slightly surprised by that. I'm happy with that. And I honestly think if Rory were to go out and like boat race the Valero Texas Open field, bad for his career. Bad for his career. Like We don't want that. So I'm happy he played okay, not nearly A-plus Rory McIlroy, but he's in good enough form. He's hitting his irons good enough. Let's do it, dude. Let's fucking do it. Yeah. I'm down. Yeah, I don't hate it as much as I thought I was going to. Uh, Russ Henley, solid performance from Russ. Not going to win the Masters, but could definitely play good. Oh, he was. I thought you said he was. <laughs> he was there for a little bit, but then he missed too many putts, and I was like, nah, he's not going to win yeah, the Masters. Okay. But uh, played well last year, obviously. Hideki. We've been texting about Hideki. He played good. He's been playing good. Hideki, outside of Scotty, you could argue that Hideki probably, of the PGA Tour players, has the best statistical run-in uh, to this event. The model likes him this week. He's fifth in the model. He's been doing everything good he's excellent uh short game we know that what do you make of what hideki did last week does it affect your opinion on him going forward we know the price is at this point horrific the awful price but give me the uh, ten thousand foot view on how you're thinking about what hideki did last week and uh where he's doing next yeah looking at results to results he's played great since the genesis obviously that win he hasn't finished outside of the top 12 in his last four starts hasn't finished outside the top 16 in his last four starts at augusta and then looking at the strokes gain striping the ball yet again doing a lot of good things from the degree and on the putting green so hideki makes a ton of sense but i think like you said that number is unbettable he's going to be giga chalk at nine thousand dollars in DraftKings. one of like the middle price guys like 13th i think he's the 13th price guy on DraftKings, which is crazy and so he'll be super chalky there. But what are we seeing now? 22, 25 to 1? 25, yeah. I don't think I'd I'd be upset if I missed out on a 25 to 1 Hideki, although it is very clear in the cards that it makes a ton of sense. Yeah, he, he makes sense on paper. I just think, 20, like, 
Hideki, when he won the Masters, was like 40, 50 to 1. Right. He isn't the type Usually of guy. where he was when he wins. Yeah, I don't think of Hideki as a guy who wins as one of the favorites in the tournament. Uh, he makes sense. We'll talk through the field here soon enough. But I like what Hideki did. He, did, he gave you no, if you like Hideki, he did nothing at Valero to throw you off the scent. He did everything you'd expect him to do. Like if uh, you have a future, you should be vibing. Oh, like, sure. I don't know if anyone has, but like there's definitely 60s out there pre-2024. Yeah. So I, I looked at it right after Genesis was the time to bet him. He was still like 45 to one for, I think, a week or two after yeah. Riv. And now he's just been playing too good. Tommy, bounce back performance from Tommy. I faded him. That was a mistake. I should have known Tommy was going to bounce back. Uh, looked fine. Spieth, unserious golfer. But what he, is, yeah. what he did on 18 on Saturday. Oh, what, yeah, what are your thoughts on that? It was the most unserious golf thing I've ever seen in my life. Like, yeah, the rules say you can do it. Sure. But like, what are you doing? How? Why are you even over there? How is this happening? Why does this happen? The reason that doesn't happen is because no one hits it over there. And no <laughs> yeah. one, like only him, like only hit, he would, would do that. So unserious golfer. I like love him this week as how could you not? He has not hit the ball better than he did last week since a long time. I'm going back into that right now. Since the PGA champ. Nope. Not even then. Since the CJ cup in 2022. He has not, as the best, he's hit the ball. 20, yeah, that's I, a, I, wish, I wish I didn't see that. That's a man who's just dropping statistical facts on you, and it's hard to argue with those. And he, I mean, my concern with him, if I if we want to try to poke holes in that ball string, because I'll tell you right now, betting Jordan at 20 to 1 or whatever he is this week, like, hold on, what's the best number right now? I think 22. Uh, uh, yeah, 22. That to me is a horrible bet, an awful bet, horrible in every single way. That the, the the number is ridiculous. Like you're paying full, you're getting no discount at all. Like everything no is baked in his course history, which would be the argument there. So I would have to see unbelievable ball striking numbers. Which to your point, last week was nice. I'm just concerned that what drove that great ball striking was the off the tee numbers. Like he drove it really, really well. He has his iron is good too. Solid enough. Like gaining four strokes is not bad. But at Augusta, I want a guy who's coming in with some spike iron play performances. Like, let me just, this was a key for Augusta to talk about later, but I'll just list it off now because I think it's important in the speed conversation. I think it ties into the uh, what we we're talking about last week with a trend where there was that spike approach play trend, and obviously it paid off with Akshay. Here are the last six winners at Augusta in their biggest spike approach effort within their last five starts before the Masters. So, like, five starts back before the Masters, here is what their best approach performance was. Okay. Rom, plus 12.8, lit it up at Riv. Scotty, Love plus it. 8. Scotty, plus 8.8. Hideki, plus 4.8. That's the lowest. Like, the worst, best approach effort is the 4.8 right. from Hideki. DJ, plus 13.2. Tiger, plus 9.6. Reed, plus 8.8. .8. Like, these are fat approach numbers coming in within your last five starts. And the thing with a guy like Spieth is, yeah, he gained four last week, but I haven't seen that spike upside yeah. from him since some, like you have to go back to RBC for him to be gaining even close to those numbers. I just worry from a winning perspective. Can Jordan play well? Can he top 10? Obviously. Can he top five? It's not a lock, but a high floor player. I just worry about his spike upside at 22 to one uh, on a week like this. I, I do agree with you. And that 22 to one is all it's 99% course history because he was 22 to one all year round. It's not like he's playing tremendous golf right now. Uh, what do I want to, was there a, what would you rather bet Xander? I mean, sorry, uh, Jordan at 22 or Rory at 13 or 10. It's like sticking ice picks into my eye, trying to decide between those two choices. I think, I think I would go with Rory. I really okay. do. And I also like, I I think you have to think we talk about this all the time on here. And I think it's extra true this week that it's go, the guy who's going to win is probably going to be low odds. Somebody below 40 to one. Like there's really, yeah, we can bet some long shots for the fun of it. They probably have no chance to win. So you have to feel very confident that going into a final round, if this guy's tied for the lead or as a shot lead or a two shot lead that they can win. Now I've shit on Rory a million times on here and says he has no guts. And we've seen him down the stretch at majors. I actually trust Rory to close better than Spieth. Spieth hasn't even been closing events on the PGA Tour. Like, there's been a variety of times where he's been close to winning, hasn't done it. At least Rory wins sometimes. So I'd probably go Rory. How about you? 
Probably Rory. I mean, I actually they're both they're both guys that I'm really considering this week. I agree with that take about Rory, but I think the number would just let, let me get more guys with with Spieth if I started with Spieth. So I'll I'll go with Spieth. I'll go with Spieth. Yeah, that's fair. And and I think I was thinking because I true, don't love Rory so much to bet him at thirteen. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, that's fair. From a card building perspective, I think I agree. If it was purely just choose which do you think is a better bet act, I would probably go Rory. But okay, I agree. For given like more balls in the hopper than Spieth, here are the other big names that played. Adam Scott. Adam Scott was T14, apparently. I had no idea he was even in the tournament. He finished T14, the most classic Adam Scott performance you'll ever see. Uh, Ludwig Ober, T14, struck the ball nicely, drove it really well. The short game was not good. Here's a question for you. The Ludwig haters are going to be all over me for this. Why is Ludwig 35 to 1 and Akshay is 110 to 1? That, that's absurd. That is actually absurd. Because Akshay now has two wins on the PGA Tour. Ludwig has one, and it was the RSM, so don't tell me that his win is b- better. Akshay's win at Valero is the best field of, of, between those. Akshay is a lefty who fits this course and has been spiking with the iron play. Like, I'm not saying Ludwig is, doesn't have a chance to win. I, first time start. Neither of these guys have a great chance because they're first-time starters, and first-time starters do not win the Masters. But that, to me, is just insane. Like, is Ludwig really that much more likely to win than Akshay? Racist DraftKings. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'll say it. I'll say it. That's bad. That's bad. There's no reason that. I mean, if he's a few points higher, fine. One ten to thirty five is absurd. Absurd. Makes no sense. It doesn't make, make any, sense. It it makes no sense. Brian Harmon. I didn't. Again, all these guys. I, Akshay was just so far ahead the whole week that like I really wasn't even paying attention to what happened with. The what other are Brian Harmon's odds this week? Like forty. Harmon. I think it's got to be more than that. 80. 80. Okay. That's, I guess that makes sense. But, but I'll say this I put together a list uh, on vincerix.com. Obviously, get over there for the write ups. That's where our picks and, and our write ups will be this week. And we've been doing all right coming to the Masters. I think we have three caches in the last uh, couple of weeks. Plus, you had Scotty uh, at API. But here, so I just listed off that trend of guys with plus eight or better like approach numbers coming in. The list of guys who have accomplished that coming in here, obviously we don't have the live stats, we only have the tour stats. It's a bunch of random names. The only big names on this list are Scotty and Brian Harmon. Brian Harmon put up a 10 plus 10 approach effort, uh, I believe it at Bay Hill. So Bay like, Hill. And is he going to win two majors in a row? Absolutely not. But like at 80 to one, I don't think that price of long shots. You're going to bet it. You're going to bet it. I, I know you and you're going to bet it, which don't, don't bet it. No, I'm not going to. Because the other thing is like the distance. I You have to have distance for me here too. So I'm, I'll be out on Harmon for that. But if you're just looking at the stats, at least he can hit his irons good enough. And there's a lot of the marquee names are not. So, But also Brian Harmon has played six good rounds of golf in 2024. Six. Bay Hill and uh, no, two rounds at Bay Hill and four at the players. Everything else has been shit. To be fair though, those were the biggest dick events that there are to play and like i i lean that towards Har- Harmon at this point like just he won he won the open i don't think Harmon cares about the pg like if i was him so that would be my one counter to like when it's mattered he's played well but to me the biggest black flag or red flag for uh old brian Harmon is the course history is okay he has a t12 but it'd be the lack of distance like you gotta have some pop for me here uh this week and so we won't go. We'll get to these guys that didn't play well anyway uh, soon enough. So that'll be enough. TPC San Antonio. Let's quickly talk live. I know you had eyes on it uh, as much as possible. Give me the players from live this week that most caught your eye, both in a positive and negative way, coming into the Masters. For people who maybe didn't watch it and have no idea like how guys play, just give me the summary of like of the guys in the field, how you felt about them. Positive, I'd, I'd have to say Joaquin Neiman. He finished T9, nothing absurd in terms of results, but it, he's one of those guys you walk by, he turns your head. It sounds different coming off of his club face. It truly, it sounds different. Bryson as well. Sounds so different when they hit their drivers, and they're so talented, and Joaquin Neiman's being touted up a lot. Now, I, I don't think he has any, any chance this week, but I'm just saying he caught my eye, and he is a great, talented player. I don't... Top 20, sure. Anything higher than that, I will not be a part of, and I do not think he will uh, will accomplish. And probably the worst, probably John Rom. John Rom finished T4, 
eight under, but he, you've, you've watched the kind of live. He continues to hit so many off squirrely shots. Like he rinsed a few today or yesterday. Not he didn't shank any this week, thankfully, but he's hit some bad iron shots and this has been going on since he's joined live. That's not going to fly around Augusta. He's been playing resort courses for the last few months. I know Doral is, is a step above that. Doral's a real test, but like this dude is not firing on all cylinders. And he rinsed one in front of my eyes of like, dude, what the fuck is going on, John Rom? So I don't, I think it's Rom on the bad side, Neiman and Bryson on the good side. Yeah, I think that's fair. And, and we'll talk Neiman soon enough. I, I totally think he is going to be extraordinarily hyped up this week. And I think it is 100% deserved based on the quality of like talent and ball striking ability that he has and how he's been playing this year. Like he is deserving of the hype that he's going to get. The big red flag with, with Neiman is he's never mixed in a major. You don't see a lot of guys win the right. masters who have never even come close to mixing in a major. Now he does have the positives of a, a win at Riv. I love that. That's a, that's a great, comp for here there's a lot of things to like about neiman we'll talk about him in more detail soon enough um but to your point about just like when you watch him it's sick 100 and he's looked great oh, yeah. all year and he's nuking it from the tee absolutely he's up there with bryson in distance like if you people who haven't seen neiman play in a while you'll remember him as a as a long hitter obviously he's taking it to another level this year he is sending it from the tee my thought on some guys like serge i i texted before the uh week started that Sergio and Bubba were the guys that I liked from a long shot perspective at Augusta. I said that before the week started and then they got off to a great start. Um, Sergio obviously fighting there till the very end of those kind of, let's call it, let's go Sergio, Bubba, P. Reed. I think those are the three kind of like course horse Augusta guys right. who are over on live who played okay last week, obviously Sergio, the best of those, which of those three, I don't know if you saw him in person, but of those three, which one maybe caught your eye? Are you most uh, optimistic about coming into? Yeah, I watched all three of them. Sergio did not miss a drive all week. Not that Augusta is a course. We have to be deadly accurate with the driver. Whereas Doral, you can't really miss in some spots. Uh, Patrick Reed, just very Patrick Reed, plodding along, scramble, do your thing, which I think will fit Augusta much more better than uh, the, just a pure off the tee prowess from Sergio. So they, I think Sergio hit the ball better, and that would probably show in the result of Live Miami. He missed three iron shots all week, and one of them was really costly. But this dude, Sergio, was nails tee to green. Probably Patrick Reed, because I just love his scrambling ability. He's, he's Patrick Reed, and he always plays well at Augusta. He knows that course like the back of his hand. Uh, hit the ball okay, nothing crazy. Again, around the green and on the green is the edge for me with Patrick Reed. And I'm sure the most <clears throat> conversation is going to be about Brooks Kepka. He played terrible uh, in the final round specifically. We'll talk Brooks soon enough, but my high level take on Brooks is that's a tough golf course. Hit Doral, <clears throat> excuse me. And if you have nothing to play for and you know the Masters yeah. is coming up, you don't care. And it, they, you're, the margin for error, you, you saw it being their boots on the ground of hitting a ball into the water or not is razor thin. Like, Brooks has been spraying it from the tee this year, but you can spray it a little bit from the tee at Augusta. He knows how to play that course. Like I honestly, I even said this before the week started. I hope he doesn't play that well. I don't want there to be like a shit ton of hype about him. I was kind of glad how things worked out for Brooks. What was your take is I know you're not as high on him this week, but with uh, his finish, I know people are going to go, Oh, he sucked it. Doral, like he's toast. Yeah. That's not the case for me. I think if you're a Brooks guy, a Brooks backer, last week you should just not worry about it at all. I will say, I want, I, I think you have to be worried about the putter because looking at the lift stats, uh, Brooks has been putting the last two weeks really, really bad, and he brought out a mallet putter, which is not Brooks esque. Brooks has that patented blade that he always uses, and he like. I feel like it has to be bad for him to make a change the week before the Masters. You don't just do that, so. Brooks bring out that mallet. I think there's something going on on the greens with Brooks. Remember last year at the Masters, last year at the PGA, we were joking about how good he was was from par, you, the best putter of all time, Brooks from par. <laughs> yeah. He was making every single par putt no matter the distance. So I, I think there's a real issue with the putter, which is not what you want heading into Augusta. And I think that's a good lead into the Augusta keys. And we'll touch on that in just a second. One thing I did want to note, because I was manually calculating par five scoring for the live guys uh, last night, which – 
that's now uh, the par five rankings are up on Ben So if you want to get deep into the model, like we've gone through the effort of getting you the live stats that you need this. You need to tweet that out. Yeah, those are on uh, bensarex.com. And <laughs> I saw this from Brooks's final round yesterday. Par five scoring at Augusta, one of the most important stats. Everybody knows that you got to be great on the par fives to play well at Augusta. You got to be great coming in on the par fives to play well at Augusta. Final round yesterday. Brooks birdied all the par fives. And those are tough par fives. Yeah, at, they are. Uh, at Doral, he, he shoots plus seven or plus five, but birdies all the par fives. And if I, if, if I want to spin away it's that Brooks crazy. did something good in the final round, if I was him, I'd go, the par fives matter to Gusto. Let me focus in on the par fives today. And he, he birdied every single one of them. The rest of the holes don't really matter. So if you're looking for a positive Brooks take, that's my take. He was practicing the par fives uh, yesterday at Doral. Only every single there. one of them. And if he birdies all the par fives at Augusta, he's going to be in the mix. There's no question about it. So, yeah, no, that's a good take. That's a good take. That's my Brooks uh, final round take from yesterday. But let's get into the keys at Augusta. I wrote up that there is more content about the Masters than any other tournament. More people want to have takes about what it takes to succeed at Augusta than any other course. And it makes sense. It's the Masters. I get it. But I will say, if you're somebody who handicaps golf on a weekly basis or you bet on golf on a weekly basis or you want to watch a lot of golf, it is one of the easiest tournaments to handicap of the whole year. It's very straightforward. Hit it far, have spike upside with your irons, be really good around the greens and be competent with the putter. Like, And at the end of the day, what does that mean? It means the best golfers who are in the best form tend to play good at Augusta. It's not rocket science. It's nothing fancy. That's how I feel about it. What's your take on the keys of Augusta? Couldn't agree with you more. Complete bag you need. Focus in on those key stats, driving distance, spike with your irons, be crafty around the greens, and have some balls on the green. Take that wide line if you have to. So, yeah, you got you can't have any flaws in your game. But well, the, at the end of the day, like it's very hard, and you have to have a complete goal, a complete build to play well here. But it's a very obvious handicap. Like you know who those guys are. So at the end of the day, like if you're a casual watching the show, bet Scotty. You want to sweat? That's Scotty Scheffler. But if you're into the weeds every single week, like Adam and I are, there's a lot more that goes into it. But if you're just a guy, a regular ass follower who just wants to watch the masters this week, you want to sweat that Scotty Scheffler four to one. Yeah, no, that's a great point. And I was about, to, I was going to talk Scotty soon enough and say that I believe he's going to win the tournament. And we talked about players and we were there and we said, he's probably going to win this tournament. We hope he doesn't. He wins there. And then two weeks ago, Regular listeners will know we stood here or sat here and said, Scotty will not win the Houston Open. It's not the type of tournament that sets up best for him. He did not win there even at two to one or whatever he was. If you're only betting one tournament a year, if you're only betting the majors, you don't care about like long-term season ROI. Yeah, just bet Scotty. I mean, he, he checks all the boxes. All the other marquee names are struggling to some extent. The only guys who are popping in the numbers who match anywhere close to what Scotty is are not winners, are not capable, in my opinion, of having the heart to win at Augusta. So. Yeah, it, it just do that. I thank you for bringing that up because at it's the very hard. least, you'll get a Sunday sweat, which is 90% of what you're looking for. Yeah, if Scotty really? is not one of the top, like if Scotty doesn't have a great chance to win on Sunday, I will be more surprised than probably any take that I could possibly come up with about other players. Like it just is so. I hope he's not, though. Like we both hope he's not. But oh, yes. yeah, <laughs> no one hopes. I, I hope he misses the cut, but I just, this is like. I just yes, can't I see the world where it doesn't. The other thing I was going to say is like the statistical, the shot, the strokes gained, all that stuff makes it's it's crystal clear. Just be gaining across the board, be spiking with the approach, be spiking with the around the green play. The only thing that complements that at Augusta that doesn't make it like absolute slam dunk obvious is the course history aspect. And you do need some experience here. Guys who have experience can overcome some poor form to play well, to finish in the top 20, to maybe surprise for a top 10 or a top five if you want to look for like the course history, guys. I don't care the course history you have. You're not winning unless you're also coming in with great form. If you can find me a guy who was playing poorly coming into the Masters, Hideki, you could argue, is probably the closest guy who wasn't just popping off the page with his form. But Hideki makes all of the sense in the world and that he's a spike iron player, great around the greens. And at that time, he had plus distance as well. So it's just like, don't overthink it. If you want to like get contrarian and, oh, this guy's course history, whatever, like I just don't see it from an outright perspective, at least. I agree. I agree. We just talked about Scotty. He's obviously the favorite. You can get plus four fifty. Uh, what's the is there like is there numbers out there better than that on Scotty? Like in I think secret that's all, I think that's all we're getting. At least for now, I think there's all that's all we're getting. It's just 
again, we don't want to come in here and, and just praise Scotty, but it's like I listed, I sent a tweet out this week of all the guys who have not beaten Scotty Scheffler on the PGA tour this year in any tournament. Let me read them to you. <laughs> Let me read them to you, Matt. This is good stuff. This is good stuff. Rory McElroy has not beaten Scotty Scheffler at golf this year. Neither is Victor <laughs> Hovland, Colin Morikawa, Max Homa, Fitz, Ross Henley, Tommy, Corey Connors, Shane Lowry, Harmon, Adam Scott, Tom Kim, Tony Finau, Minwoo, Sungjae, Keegan, Cam Young, Rose, like Siwoo. That's just the list of names when I like thought of people that might be interesting to people to bet at Augusta. They haven't beaten Scotty in any tournament and now they're going to come to a course that fits him perfectly he, he's been beating him on courses that maybe aren't the perfect scotty courses now obviously every course is great for scotty but how am i to believe that any of these guys are going to beat scotty this week i can't did you did you see that tweet from rick rick gaiman in late march comparing scotty Scheffler's strokes gains strokes gain to nfl passing yards it was a little bit of an absurd like combination but yes i did yeah, that, I just wanted to bring that up because it had Scotty. If in, if you trans, translated the strokes gained on the PGA Tour to NFL passing yards, Tua Tagovailoa would be passing for 914 yards a game. Obviously, there is a lot more that goes into it than just that, but that's just the gap that Scotty has on the rest of the PGA to, PGA Tour. So, what he's doing, put in NFL terms, that's like the best way you can put it. I think it's just like okay, what if you go through the things that could go wrong for Scotty? Maybe he's a little off with his driver. Oh, so he only gains two and a half shots on the field that week. Oh, his what if his approach play isn't dialed in? Oh, so he's only going to gain four to five shots on approach. Oh, what if he's completely something horrible happens to Scotty where all of a sudden he can't hit the ball at all anymore? Some terror, the eclipse causes something to go wrong with Scotty, ruins his ball striking. Oh, he's also the best around the green player probably in the entire field. Oh, and not according to the booth. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now he's putting. I mean. It Riv, the only time he has struggled with his approach play all year was at Riv, and he almost gained eight shots around the greens. So even <laughs> like it's stupid. His stats, like, if there's ever something that goes wrong with one of the stats, he solves it somewhere else because his around the green game is so sick and it's perfect for Augusta. Like, I just I don't I don't really see how somebody beats him. The Bay Hill to Augusta course run is could not set up better for Scotty Scheffler. Bay Hill, Sawgrass, Memorial Park, Augusta. Unreal course fits for Scotty. Unreal. Yeah. Imagine parlaying that top five. Should have done it. Done I'll, it. I'll, I was also going to say, so this is another take that I have this week. There's going to be so many people. I've already seen it. They're going to be like the course is in the best condition we've ever seen. It's going to be firm and fast. It will be the, the, so hard, I'm so shocked. difficult. I'm shocked. First of all, it's always in great condition, but sure, yeah, maybe, the, maybe this year is better. Also, what's going to happen is it's supposed to rain one to two inches on Thursday. There's a is chance that, they may not even, like, well, it's a per, the weather, so who knows? I wouldn't call it a fact, but like, a hundred. it did say 100% precipitation. Like, the weather on Thursday is supposed to be absolutely horrible. We may not even get a lot of golf on Thursday, but all these takes about the course conditions could be completely wiped out by what happens with the weather on Thursday. So what I, the long story short of it is just stick to the Augusta keys. It's Augusta. It's going to over four days. It's going to play to its keys. And what I was going to say was if for some reason it's firm and fast and extra hard, well then just give the trophy to Scotty. Don't even play the yeah. tournament. Just put the green jacket on Scotty. Cause the more difficult the course plays, the more precision you need with your iron play or driving or chipping. That's all to Scotty's advantage. So if you hear like, oh, the course is going to be so tough. Oh, it's playing so hard this week. You don't want to hear that because in my opinion, then just give Scotty the jacket now. Couldn't agree more because it's already a perfect course fit, even if it's not the case. So, yeah. All right. So with all of that said, we're now going to try to pick guys now, well, yeah. <laughs> to beat Scotty because their odds are higher and we're dumb. And that's what we think we should do this week. But it's way more fun to do this. And we'll get our hopes up because that's what we do and hope that one of these guys beats him. Uh, the next guy on the board, John Rom. We just talked about him. You said he's been struggling a little bit. He has, in my opinion, he's also been, I don't know how much John Rom cares on it. Like he clearly seems almost disappointed to some degree with like what goes on with live his stats are still great he's still hitting the ball amazing he's leading all the like ball striking numbers on live up there with neiman 
we know that winning the Masters back to back is nearly impossible. For me, that's like just what throws them out. I think the price honestly isn't horrible, like no. all things considered. But if it just we don't see back to back winners at Augusta, I think in the betting markets he's going to be the most underlooked person, which yeah. is a scary thing. So yeah, yeah. I would say yeah. Again, again, if you're the casual golf fan and you don't like get in your head like we do about like oh you cannot win the Masters back to back, it's impossible. Like. I mean, he could <laughs> like, there's no, like, if, there's no real, that's not like a real thing. Like he could just do it. He's 12 to one. That, that price is fine to me. I Fair. think like he's under the radar because of, of being over on live. And yes, is he looking amazing on live? Not really, but there's a lot of times too, where he's just hitting iron shots and drives where it's like, that's John Rob. Like you've yeah. And like, look at his results on, on live. Like they're the more, most consistent of anyone. He's got no worse finish. than I think T eight in what five events. So he's like, so consistent on live but he's just not good enough to win yet yeah but i think well i think what's been holding him back too especially with the, the three round format like you've got to be making putts oh, no yeah. matter what and his putter's just been a little cold i swear they cut to him every time to putt and he's missing but the t to green play is fine so if he gets to augusta gets comfortable on the greens like i expect Ron to play well i'm not gonna say you should i think from like if he's not popular in things like dfs get on Rom. like i can he win probably not but i love like I'd be surprised if he doesn't finish in the top 10. Genuinely. I think he's like just okay. hitting it so well. Uh, the next guy we need, we'll have a long, Oh, actually I, I was in the wrong order. I skipped Rory. We just talked about Rory. Uh, are you still, is he still under consider? Is he like legit consideration for you right now? Yeah, he's definitely in my top three of under consideration, which we will get to on Wednesday. So Vincerox.com keep the write-ups because they will be there for the win if you want to see the winner but yeah no, nothing changed from what we just said about rory you don't hold you also famously were on rory single bullet last year you're not you're not afraid to go back to him here after what he did to you last year i am just so high on rory at um, like rory at augusta makes sense course fit wise as does a guy we'll get to and i just think and the course history is oh okay nothing great nothing amazing i know he finished runner up to scotty but it was he was never in contention um, but he hits a high draw. He's a bomber. Hits it further than anyone. He has can spike with the long irons and could heat up on the greens. Like it's Rory. It's Rory, I'm describing Rory McIlroy right now. It's Rory fucking McIlroy. Figure it out, dude. Figure it out. Oh, it, it gets me frustrated. Yeah, and my only response to that would be the course has made sense for Rory his whole career. I yeah. This man has not won a major in forever. He doesn't win majors and he's 10 to one. I like, I know you might do it. I know my take won't affect you. And that's why I'm, I'm giving it not to affect your opinion, just to let people know how I feel about it. Horrible bet. 10 to one Roy. Like I can't, I like, yes, it doesn't make sense. Yes. Obviously it always has made yeah. sense. And every yeah. year we come here and there's this reason why this year is the one that's going to be different. And Oh, he's moved with Butch Harmon this time. Like I can't, I can't do it at 10 to one, especially like, I'd rather just bet Scotty at plus four fifty. I like, uh, yeah, oh, it's yeah, not my, no, it's not right. my normal like seven eight x return, but I like to just shut down the entire card to bet Rory. It's, it, it's I won't be get over to the tick. See if Jersey does it. Jersey's been hot. If it, if if Rory's gonna win the Masters, you you do need to be on him. Like you would yeah, be devastating 100%. for you if you miss. That's it. what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Like if I'm not on him and he like is in the Sunday can, Sunday mix, I'd be upset. This is the guy though. There will be a discussion point all week. Xander Shoffley. No, like listeners of this pod will know how I feel about Xander Shoffley. Generational strokes gain consistency. Oh, you're going to go look at guys. The numbers on Xander this week. You won't believe it. Look at these numbers. Oh my God. The numbers on Xander are, I'm drowning <laughs> in the numbers. These are the greatest numbers I've ever seen. I want to frame them and put them on my wall and wake up to these numbers every fucking day but he is 16 to 1 to win the masters uh on 16 you can maybe get an 18 to like there's been 20s at times but this man doesn't win golf tournaments you have to win the golf tournament for that 16 to 18 to 1 outright ticket to pay you you don't get anything if he plays consistently you could bet him other ways you could play it like i'm not saying he's gonna play bad he'll probably finish second he might finish third like i totally get the numbers i him out a million times on betting him outright. It makes no sense, but I know you're considering it. So give me the other side of that the argument. I, I think you might like consider I because I would be so mad. I'd be so mad on Thursday morning if I bet Xander and he is through 13 holes even par. And that's that's what will happen. 
He'll be like playing fine. He's even par at Augusta. Okay. And I will be so mad that I'm betting that I bet Xander at, the, at that X number. So it makes a ton of sense. He's in that crazy form that he's in immaculate form as usual. I did. I do think that he's going to break through this year in some somewhere, but I don't know if I can pull that trigger at 16. Here's I my don't. question. How many shot lead on Scotty yeah, can... would oh, Xander have? Stop. How far ahead of Scotty would Xander have to be going into the final round where you would be like, he is winning for sure. What was the lead at players? Was like six, eight, six, six seven, eight. That was a lot. <laughs> I don't know, dude. What the fuck? That's the, I don't know. But that's the thing. It's like if you're betting Xander this week at 16 to 1, you have to believe with your heart that like if it's tied with Scotty that he could actually beat him or that if he had a three-shot lead that like he would for sure win. And it, no one would actually think that. But at least he can hit a driver and it doesn't have to be perfectly straight this time. Like at, a, at the players, it did have to be perfectly yeah. straight. Yeah. I mean, because like I trust him with an iron in his hand, like we talked about. I trust him with an iron in his hand, but like off the tee is like a little bit sketchy. Augusta, that's at the window. Like he can also, drive it. In here's my other thing about Xander, because it's going to be the oh, he's played so good in the majors, like Xander majors every time. It used to be that way. He hasn't finished better than T10 in a major since the 2021 U.S. Open. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine straight. Really? He's not in the top 10. Now, he's playing consistent. He's top 20 in every single one of those for the most part, but that is Xander. Strokes gain consistency. Is he going to play well this week? Yes. If he like missed the cut or played terrible, I would be stunned. He is going to play great. I could easily see him finishing top five. He probably should finish top five. But even with all that said, I have no interest in betting him outright because it's not about strokes gain consistency. It's about strokes gain winning. And even if Xander was in the mix, I never would think he was going to win. And I just can't bet a guy at 16 to one and hold that ticket. If the whole week, even when he's playing well, I'm going to be going, oh, he's not going to win. Oh, he's not going to right. win. Like, right. Like, why would I do that? You're so. No, you're hundred percent right. I agree. I agree. And so that's my Xander take for the week. This next, actually, we still got to talk about him standalone. It is Brooks Kepka because I've been high on Brooks. I've got futures on Brooks in the bag already in the 20s range on Brooks. But I am, I will say, I, I always give the, I always give the most honest, you know, I some I change mm -hmm. my opinion sometimes quickly, but I always yeah. tell you how, how I'm feeling. Like I, I try to assess it in real time. Strong opinions loosely held. I'm a little concerned. I'm a little concerned about Brooks Kepka statistically and some of the things that I've seen on live. Now, with that being said, I've also seen a lot of things I really like on live. The iron play to me looks dialed in. Can his driver get a little bit loose? Yes. Is that okay to Augusta? Also? Yes. And ultimately for Brooks, a lot of that shit, honestly, I don't care about. It doesn't matter. Brooks Kepka is 20 to one at the masters. When we just talked about, Oh, you're holding a ticket on a guy. Brooks could miss the cut. Sure. Like it could just go wrong for Brooks. He could play terrible. He could mail it in. He could suck. He probably doesn't have the like floor that even a Xander would have or a Rom would have, or maybe even a Rory would have. It's like he, he could play terrible. But if Brooks plays good and he's in the mix, yeah, you want, I you trust have have him team. so much. And at 20 to one, I can bet other guys. I can have other guys yeah. on the card. It's like, yeah, it's it's risk reward, but it's Brooks Kepka in a major. Like he don't it, overthink it. And so for that reason, I'll, I will very likely stick with what I've got. But I did just want to say publicly, I'm not as confident as I was maybe a couple months ago about it. But the price is fine. And again, the price is too good. Like, why is it that well? Like, why is his price that good? He's of, won a major more than any of these guys that we talked about. More yeah. than Rory has a, he's won infinity majors but since Rory last won a major. Rom's the only other guy who, like, I head to head, I could Rom. I would probably take over Kepka down the stretch right now. Yeah. Like Rom beat him at the Masters last year, so I think you guys said it. Over Xander, like don't even bring that conversation to me. That's a joke of a conversation. The next guy on the board is Spieth, who we just have already talked about. But Spieth hasn't won anything in forever. He doesn't both majors and just like so. From that perspective, of these guys in this range. It's just hard for me not to bet Brooks because if you bet Brooks 20 to one in every major, it's going to work out for you long-term. I yeah. I literally guarantee you, and you can look historically, it has as well. Brooks is always a good price when he wins majors. For the most part, like every time Brooks wins a major, afterwards, what do people do? They go, oh, why didn't I bet Brooks? He was 20 to one. Right. I just, no, I agree. I just can't like miss out on that. I know you're anti-live this week in general, but like you're 
you're cool with the Brooks betters. You're you like you're no cool no beef. I, I mean, I'm gonna say it how it is, but I'm also gonna say everyone's betting, pl- betting slash playing live guys because they can, and I'm just going to take the other road. I'm just going to find every you know how I am. Any other possible way I can to get different, I'm going to do. So p- this is the one out of four chance to bet live guys slash play live guys. They're gonna do it. I'm gonna play zero live guys in DFS. I'm going to bet zero live guys because. There's not there is a universe where no live players finish inside the top ten. It wouldn't be it would be crazy, but it wouldn't be otherworldly. And if that's the case, and I'm just playing PGA Tour guys, that gives me X and X more avenues to cash in any market. So I'm just gonna do that. Do that. I don't hate any live players. I am I bet live every week. I watch live every week. I like live, but I'm just going to take this path in the in the Augusta. I, I, this could change uh, the next major. Right now, I'm going to stick to my guns. All right, there you have it. The Jers is full fade on the live guys. I will say I'm the exact opposite. I'm buying the live stock. I believe in the live player. So you've got both sides of the coin on this. And we'll have write-ups on it and as we do on Mitzerix. And, and that's what I like about the side is we don't always agree on stuff. We'll give you both yeah. sides and we'll give you the reasons why we think that. And that's for you to decide. Do you agree with this? Do you have some other idea? Um, so I will say I completely take the other side of that. Uh, we've talked to Decky. General consensus here. Bad bet is, is are we settling there? Bad bet, good player, can fuck number bad number. If you, no, okay, let me re, let me restart. If you're not a everyday better, good bet. If you're a everyday better, bad bet. Okay, not. I'm not sure. I totally get the take, but like I'm saying, if you're like a like for you do this every single week, you bet golf every single week. Hideki twenty five to one is a bad bet, but if you're just watching the Masters casually fine bet you know what i'm saying yeah that's fair like if you don't know anything about what hideki's odds normally are or what they like in most tournaments that's fair yeah okay. the uh makes more sense actually these guys come into an interesting well this is just this whole range is interesting we need to talk about these guys in our classic like who you like the most and who you like really hate in this range because neiman we just talked about him he's the best or he's the worst odds out of these guys he's around the 28 to 30 range the next all the rest of these guys are all like mid 30s and the, I, they could easily drift to 40s that's the other thing guys will drift this week there's no need to really? rush ever like i got hoplin last year at like 50 to 1 that like late because he just like drifted so windy c 35 to 1 Will Zalatoris, 35 to 1. Victor Hoblin, 35 to 1. Patrick Cantley, 35 to 1. Ludwig Obert, 35 to 1. Uh, who do you like the best here? And who would you be fading the most of this set of players? Love Will Zalatoris. Love, love, love Will Zalatoris. And I will probably fade Wyndham. Fade wow. Wyndham. I honestly like Ludwig more than Wyndham, as odd wow. as that sounds. I like Ludwig more than Wyndham. But Will Zalatoris, back to back results were poor, but just a few. Short months ago, people were rushing to bet Will Zalatoris 35 to ones at Augusta. You can get that now. And his last two results, I know he missed a cut and he finished T70 or whatever it was in Houston. Gain strokes, ball striking in both of those starts. Coming off of the worst putting performance of his career in Houston. Has no place else to go but up. And yeah, you can say, yeah, Will Zalatoris is a bad putter. He's been a good putter in 2024. And this is the surface that he puts well on. And these are major conditions. This is Zal. Like if Zal Torres wins the green jacket, I promise you, I will not be missing out on it. You're betting Will Zal Torres. I'm leaning that way. I will say, I totally agree. I totally Let's agree go. because Let's go. Zal goes in the bucket of Brooks. You play Zal at the majors. Yeah, there's. You have to remember. He's a younger him. version of him. Again, when you get into the stats, you get into the T to green. You look at all the numbers this week. Just remember, we're playing a major. And every single time the majors come, the guys who play good in the majors tend to play good in the majors. That's just how it works. Like, it's easy to forget because it only happens four times a year. Like, don't overthink it. The guys who play good in the majors have something mentally, have something strategically. They know what to do. They know how to play the courses. Zal's been playing good this year. Yes, he putted poorly in those two starts. He always puts good in the majors. And he always puts good at Augusta. He loves those breaking putts. Like, he's a good green reader. We've talked about these things about Zal. And the price is fair, 35 to 1. You don't want to see Zal on a downhill right to lefter. You just don't <laughs> just want to see Pick it. the ball up out of the hole because if it's a downhill, heavy breaking putt, that's when Zal putts at best. My only concern with Zal, if I had to like point one out, would be that his distance has been a little bit down since yes. this return from injury. And I, again, I need distance here. That would be what I'm not committing to Zal right now on the spot. 
that is going to be probably the reason that it becomes iffy for me, but everything else, like his approach play is good. He's driving it really straight. Like he can gain off the team. I'm not worried about that much. And his around the green is good. I know he can put these greens. Uh, I do worry a little bit. We talk about, can you win? I still have Zal in the bucket if I don't necessarily trust him down the stretch, but at 35 to one, a lot of that stuff is baked in. Um, you mentioned Wyndham Clark. I think he's one of the most interesting players on the board this week because statistically Wyndham Clark great course fit <laughs> makes unbelievable oh, sense. Yeah. He drives it so long, huge so spike long. Up- upside with the iron play. He could Eagle if obviously this is an outlandish take, but I, it's kind of true. If Wyndham Eagled every par five, the whole week, he made 16 Eagles. I wouldn't be surprised. Like I wouldn't be he, that shocked. The man is an eagle making machine, and if you can make eagles at Augusta, who even cares what you do on the other holes? You're going to be in the mix, and he's got guts. Like I don't yeah. think I can say he's my least favorite of these guys. I the only reason I'm saying that is because we're getting like literally his his wins this season, his great golf all 2024 since the the U.S. Open, 60 to one, 40 to one, 50 to one. Now we're getting Wyndham in back to back starts. 14 to 1 at Houston didn't do nothing. 28 to 1 at Augusta in his first trip ever. Like this man was legitimately 61, 60 to 1 three starts ago. And yeah. now he's just all the way at the top. And the obvious like red glaring red flag, do not bet Wyndham Clark alert is first time starter. They do not win the Masters. But the only contrary to that for Wyndham is nobody bet him at the US Open because he had terrible major history and no like track record. That's why I didn't bet him, even though I saw with yeah. my own eyes that he, he had him like unbelievable was that he had no. So there might just be, he just might have strokes gain like heart that allows him to mix in these events with limited like experience. I, ex- I expect him to play well. Concernedly, his approach play in majors hasn't been great. And we know that's hit and miss for him. He's an interesting one. I think like even at 35, I know he was 60, 70 a few weeks ago. I don't hate the price because it's going to be a low, like it's not hard to narrow it down on the type of guys who could play well at Augusta. So I think like the winner is going to be below 40 to one. So like 35 to one at the masters, it, it, no, by definition, it isn't a long shot, but it kind of is when we factor in all the guys like range. So I don't hate the price that much, but I don't think I can bet him because of the course history. How do you feel about Hovland and Cantley? Both the two guys that haven't played in a while. I think I like can't lay better than Hovland because if Hovland was the slightest bit okay, I think he would have played. But we've saw him at the players working, grinding on things, grinding on his swing. And I think the last three weeks he's been doing that and like just getting exactly to where he needs. He probably isn't even where he needs. He's not going to skip out on the Masters because he's not 100%. So whereas can't lay, he's kind of back to that old driver putter build whatever with Cantlay, he can spike it if he wants to spike. So I just think I'm more comfortable back in Cantlay than Hoplin right now. Not that I'm going to, but yeah. I think I've had to choose. Uh, to if a guy could just randomly play good, it's Patrick Cantlay. I don't yeah. like, I don't hold his form against him at all. His iron play in the Florida swing was horrific, but like he could just show up and hit his irons. Good. It's Cantlay. Like he is an inconsistent player. And you're getting him now this week. I'm not saying I'm going to bet him, but like 35 to one on Cantlay, that's a huge price on him versus like where he is historically. And so what do we talk about? Like normally I shit on Cantlay. I usually say like 18 to one, 16 to one, 21 Cantlay, horrible bet. I agree. You're you're at least getting the discount this week of Cantlay not playing well. And his like major track record is not that different than a lot of the guys in this range. Like he's been playing better in the majors in recent years. He's got a handful of top tens. Like he's, he's He's figured out the majors to some degree. Now he hasn't mixed and he's played good at Augusta before. So like, I don't hate Cantley. I really don't. Should, should I, uh, I, I bet Cantley every major last year. I think, should I just roll it over? Should I just start, keep going? I think 35 That's, to one. This is the best if, number that we've, I've seen. If Cantley drifts to 40, I'm probably in like 41. That would be hilarious. <laughs> because like, w- like, why not? Like he, he has the skill set to do it. And he's yeah. probably just been grinding away, working on his game. And he could just show up all of a sudden and have this robotic like iron play game going and be back. So uh, no need to be worried about Cantley's approach form, in my opinion, because he is so volatile. Any interest in Finau or JT? Uh, Finau is still striping the ball. JT, I think have, I have more interest than Finau because JT, I think has, I mean, you might disagree. I think he has some dog left in him. He can just go get it. 
I know the putter is a legit, legitimate liability, and I do not trust him on a six foot slider at all. But I think he still has that ability where he can gain ten ball striking on a given week. Yeah, I don't hate JT. I'd say JT. My what are your thoughts? Uh, Forty. I've got JT T twelve this week. I think he plays fine. Uh, I'm not excited about him winning because of the putter. Like you don't need to. I don't need you to be a, a spike putter coming in here. But I do need like a steady kind of baseline, solid putting. And that's not Justin Thomas for me. Here's a three man, a three ball, hypothetical three ball, all 40 to one, all live guys. Dustin Johnson, Cameron Smith, Bryson DeChambeau, all around 40 to one. Uh, Who do you like the best out of those guys? Bryson. I'll go with Bryson. I know he has probably the worst course history out of those three, but I'm going to die on this hill i think bryson retires with a green jacket you can clip it i think brian bryson retires with a green jacket not this year um but i like i like i said horrible course history massive driver of the golf ball bryson saying augustus a par 67 is a true is literally true that doesn't mean he played good at those at those events but i think the way the course sets up for him is a par 67 he's being honest and i'm gonna die on that hill i think he's playing good enough golf to win that through ball and get himself in the mix I have been a longtime fader of Bryson at Augusta because I think to be good at because I think at Augusta you need spike iron play as like the fundamental piece of your game. Doesn't and that's not what I think about with Bryson. Now he is playing really well. I think people who haven't seen live or haven't watched live, like his driving right now is a joke. He hits it so far and so straight, it's unbelievable. If he can do that this week, his floor is so high. So I don't hate Bryson by any means. Like I'm not as out on him as I have been in previous years, but I I don't I pro- maybe agree with your take that he wins the Masters in his career. I just don't think it's this year. The guy I like the best out of these is DJ. I think the price on okay. DJ this week is is quite fair. He's been playing fine on live. He picked up a win earlier in the season since he's picked- <laughs> we had him since we he's picked up that win. He's been middle of the pack been doing just fine like the course history speaks for itself he played fine at the u.s open last year it wasn't like last year he was completely out of the scene on the major scale like he was in the mix there for a while at lacc and kind of just like hit some poor shots the year before he had a t6 at the open so dj's been popping in the majors like we just listed off a lot of guys in the, below him on the odds board who haven't had the upside in majors in recent years and DJ. don't have that dog like he has i agree and he's got the dog. So, like, I like what I've seen from him visually on live. He's hitting the ball great. I, I kind of like DJ. I'm, I'm strongly considering an outright bet on DJ this week. Don't hit that at all. Do not hit it at all. It's fucking DJ. Cam he Smith it. Uh, appears kind of broken. So, I, I think honestly, good. like Cam Smith, he became like a top five player in the world. And it was all in like one and a half seasons. Because before Cam Smith, he was like a 40 to one golfer. I mean, before that year, he was like a 40 to one golfer every single week. And then he just became like really good. And like now we're just declaring him as just like Cam Smith, which I think is fair because he earned he earned it. But it's not like he parlayed season after season after season after season. And this season on live hasn't been anything special. He's yeah, he's yeah, cut he, well, but he has not done anything great. He seems and there's some supporting evidence of like things that he said to, to back this up, like. Sometimes he's practicing really hard and then all of a sudden he gets good at everything. And then he goes through these stretches where he sucks for a long time. And the putting's the only consistent thing in his game. That's always there. I'm not seeing that consistent. Like all of a sudden he's doing everything good, which he has done before. And then that's when he goes on his nice runs. And that's what he was doing when he won uh, at St. Andrews. I think the price is fine. I, I mean, again, if you're the everyday casual fan and you know, the name Cam Smith, does he have dog a hundred percent? If he could get into the mix, he could absolutely win. So uh, at 40 to one, I don't think it's a terrible bet, but I am fully out. So now I'm going to go rapid fire. I'm going to give you ballpark price and a player and just give me one sentence about what comes to mind. Matt Fitzpatrick, 45 to one. You're a joke. <laughs> Shane, La- Shane Lowry, 50 to one. Ken Mix likes the big moment, hitting the ball really, really, really good. I bet Shane Lowry at Augusta almost every year, I swear. Really? I mean, uh, he played really well the year that Scotty won. He was, he was in the mix there for a while. I like I like the upside on Lowry. 50 to 1. Tough price on Shane Lowry. Yeah. Uh, I also don't think he could beat Scotty uh, if they were anywhere close to each he other. He tried at API, and then he got, he got to the, exactly where you wanted him, and he gagged. Yeah, I, I don't think he can beat Scotty. 
Uh, Teagues. Teagues is a player we need to talk about because he's going to be popular this week. He's seventh in the model. Again, the stats make sense for Teagues. Teagues golf course, uh, 50 to what 1, though. 50 to 1 is tough. 50 to 1 is tough. Very uh, tough. T9 in his only trip here makes a ton of sense. Spike Iron player can drive it anywhere, but drive it long, creative, more than creative around the greens and on the greens. Teagues makes a ton of sense. Probably will be popular. Uh, yeah, I'm a Teagues guy. I like Teagues. Uh, I don't think chasing the popularity this week is for me. I don't think it makes sense. I don't think he is a guy that you want to bet at 50 to, to one to win the masters. I don't think he might be a guy at 50 to one. You want to bet to win many big events uh, yet. Obviously is a sensationally talented player, but he's also his around the green play actually has been pretty bad lately. Yeah, which is kind of weird. Bad. And like, I need, there's plenty of evidence to support the fact that I think the number I, I wrote it up was that L 50 around the green number for winners here going back like a decade. So last 50 rounds, average strokes gained around the green for winners is uh plus 0. 0.38, which is pretty good per round. That's a salt. You're a good around the green player. If that's what you're doing. Yeah. But over the last 10 rounds is plus 0. 0.58 per round. So, so these, come these in, are come, good. Come yeah. Good around the green players who are also starting to spike. Uh, so that's concerning for me with Teagues, like uh, to be the opposite of that at 50 to one tough. Colin Morikawa cow is 50 to one. How do you feel about that? He, he, Colin Morikawa loves to, to hit his fade, but it's turned into a legitimate slice <laughs> and he ha, has not hit any <laughs> good shots on, on, uh, Thursday morning. He was leading this, leading the field and strokes gain off the tee. And he, he did not hit one drive. He liked, he was just hitting 35 yard slices and dropping his cl- club on his shoulders. And it was just landing in the fairway. It had to have been like 25 yards shorter than anyone else on the golf course. And it just just sliced, hitting in the fairway. And it came to fruition because he ended up shooting infinity. But it was just Colin Morikawa is truthfully broken. I bet him. If Colin Morikawa wins the Masters after losing strokes on approach and three straight starts, it would be a miracle. Like, you're going to bet Colin when he's not even doing the things that is the foundational piece of his game a generational right. iron player who can't hit his irons like think about mentally what that must feel like for colin right now like his brain has to be in a pretzel he's like yeah he's in a generational iron player he can't hit his irons it makes no sense uh i don't hate cam young this week 50 to 1 don't hate it bro i was going to fucking say i want to bet cam young just listen cam young is in the best ball striking form of objectively his career he fucks so hard in these conditions, and it is a perfect, a perfect golf course for Cam Young. And how funny would it be if Cam Young, all the heartbreak, all the Cam Young misery, breaks through at Augusta? What's stopping him? And it's himself. Uh, his brain and his around the green play is what I would say is stopping him, and that's uh, that's why I probably won't play. bet him is the short game. But to your point, 50-1. to one, Makes sense. Uh, I know BK is already locked in his first round leader on Cam Young. I like that first round leader for Cam Young. Seems like something that he could do. Makes all the sense in the world. Uh, he has the track record in majors uh, like, that you need to be a Masters champion. So he checks many boxes. The only boxes he doesn't check for me is the around the green play. But 50 to 1, not a terrible price. And a card that is, is Zal and Cam Young is just the most like stripe show major card that I think you could yeah, ever put I together. Think I'm and you do that, dude. You need to be able to look at your card this week. And when you look at it, think dogs, majors, like heart. You don't, you don't want to look at your card and go, ooh, the figure, the numbers, like stats, like, oh, this that, is great. Like You saying you, that makes me not bet Roy. Like you need the stats because, yes, that's a key as well. But you need the dog too. And you need to have played good in majors. So don't just go chase some guy because it's like strokes gained approach numbers L24 are trending. Like, yeah, maybe for DFS, maybe for placement, but not to win the tournament. Uh, Tommy Ladd, zero chance. Zero. Max is sixty-five to one. He's that's broke. a fair. That's a crazy number. <laughs> sixty-five to one. What? He uh, he played fine that's last insane. week. Insane. No he, zero course history. Zero course history. Sucks in majors. Has not been hitting the ball well at all. Uh, it makes sense why his price is elevated, but why he's sixty-five to one and the other like big name guys, the JTs and them are half that. Sixty-five to one. Like that's eye emojis, honestly. Uh, any interest in Tyrrell Hatton or Sam Burns? Tyrrell Hatton hates the golf course. Sam Burns cannot play in a hard event. 100% agree. Uh, period 75 to 1. Uh, I think it's a horrible bet. You were saying it was okay earlier. Oh, 
Yeah, but not – no, no, no. It, it was in the Fruble, I think. No, no I do not when, think he really is a good bet. I think I saw last night he was 50-1 to 1 on DraftKings, and I, I did text. If you, if you bet Patrick Reed at 50-1, to 1, that should be instantly sending you to a mental institution. Like the, the DraftKings should report you to whoever yeah. the mental institution people are, and they should show up and take you away if you bet him at 50-1. to 1, one of the worst bets you could probably ever make. Uh, Russ Henley, not going to win the Masters. Could win the Masters, though, uh, with, his, <laughs> with his play of late. Uh, Minwoo, not a Lynx course, but kind of Lynx style. How do you feel about Minwoo? Minwoo, great 2022. Did not play great in 2023. L- a-, a cannon off the tee, an absolute beast off the tee. He can't hit an iron, but he can chip in every hole. He can chip in every hole. He also can't putt anymore. He- he's forgotten how to putt. His stats are horrific. Minwoo's numbers suck, but he will chip in at least five times. If there's a prop market on chip ins for Minwoo, that is my bet of <laughs> that is my bet of the week. Multiple hammer emojis. Bet Minwoo to chip in a lot. Uh, Jason Day eighty to one. Corey Connors, Brian no. Harmon eighty to one. Any of those guys? Corey Connors is probably the best bet out of those three. Connors, Not that he's going to win. Top twenty yeah. always at the Masters. Uh, Corey Except Connors. for last year when he was guaranteed to finish top twenty and miss the cut. So that makes me even more certain that he'll finish top 20 this year. Uh, he's Agreed. not going to go two years. Siwoo or Sungjae are kind of the same price. Sungjae is 110 to 1. Siwoo is a great, I don't know if he's a great bet, but Siwoo is fucking. Siwoo's strokes gained ball striking is, are insane. He's gotten somewhat in the mix at Augusta. He likes it here. Sungjae has got decent course history, but he's still not to his degree. I think Sungjae is a great DFS play still he's going to be low owned and has upside so i like both of those guys i like them from like i think they play well maybe they're under the radar i they have no chance of winning in my opinion but i do like them uh, and i think that was arguably where you were going with that as well i like akshay 110 to 1 can he win no is the first time starter gonna win but again he has the the statistical makeup to do it and i saw some and the best thing he has going for him, left-handed. Lefty's fuck at Augusta. No, so. fuck, you're right, dude. So I, I don't hate, I just don't hate him. No, you're right, you're right. Uh, Adam Scott, Sergio Garcia, Ricky Fowler. Don't hate me for saying I don't mind Ricky Fowler this week. Like, I think Ricky Fowler makes his cut and, like, is in the top 20 on the weekend. He's squandering strokes off the tee, literally, like, gifting them at from his hand. But it's been a consistent right miss. It's And he's hitting the ball fine, like, distance-wise. He's, not, he's never going to be the longest guy. You can have that little right miss off the tee, and he gains strokes on approach in two rounds at Valero. It's a long shot for a reason. I think Ricky Fowler top twenties. Wow, that might be the biggest, the boldest take of the entire show. I also don't think I can can sign up for it, but that's a that's a you know ball take right there because you've been watching we'll it, you've been it. seeing, you've been seeing what yeah. you're seeing something the stats aren't aren't saying, which is, that's how you find value. So I support it in that sense. Uh, Denny said after the, uh, <laughs> oh, dude, I saw this so good. <laughs> Denny, Denny said that he thinks he can win the masters. Do you think he could win the masters? <laughs> dude? So funny. I was listening to it in my car and I was, I died when I heard that Denny did say that. Uh, no, I do not think he can win the masters, but I, I, he's $6,200 on DraftKings, And like people that haven't played like Stu Hagestad's like $6,100 on DraftKings, And like, like uh Mike Weir and guys like that. Denny is priced with like the legends. Like let him let him like he's a good at draft play is what I'm saying. Uh Chris no, Kirk. The Masters. Oh my Chris God. Kirk or Harris English, which of the SC Island uh, Georgia guys do you like? Harris English. Uh Keegan Bradley's 220 to 1. Any any love for Keegan? No, this isn't a key. This isn't a spot where Keegan can fuck. Steven Yeager. Reason. Stevie Yeager. Want to know a guy who can beat Scotty? Stevie, Stevie fucking Yeager. Yeggs. 250 to 1. Uh, bombs it off the tee. Has not actually the best stats, in my opinion, for this course, but strokes gain can beat Scotty down the stretch. Stevie Yeggs. And no, he, he makes a lot more sense than a lot of guys, though. I agree. Down. 250 to 1. Uh, Nikolai sucks now. Thor Olsen. I, uh, I said, every I lineup. texted yesterday every lineup for Thor Olsen. Because he's played well here before. Thor Olsen. Yeah, is a yeah. Thor Olsen is a <laughs> Masters specialist. Uh, he finished T21 in 2019. He he hasn't played many Masters. He's made the cut every time. He's three for three made cuts at the Masters. The T21, five, right? T44, and a T6 back in 2013. Thor, it's because he's sick around the greens and he's good with his irons. Yeah. 
I like Thor. Uh, if you're looking for an under the radar guy to play Thor, I like Pavone. I, I love me some no. Matteo Pavone. Kurt, Kurt's a guy I think we both uh, had some positive things to say about. How do you feel about Kurt? Yeah, Kurt is a guy who will send it off the tee and can spike with those irons for sure. Uh, if you can win at Bay Hill, you can play well at Augusta. Simple as that. Who finishes the highest out of these players? Ryan Fox, Jake Knapp, JT Poston, EVR, Grio, Ekra. Grio. Emiliano. I don't hate Grio. that. I don't hate that. Hold on, let me look at the stats really quick. Yeah, Grio can. Grio hasn't played in a while. He hasn't played since the players either. But I think Grio, he's not. He's not. He's also not hitting as good as he has hit it this year. But I like Grio to just gain. I, Grio's a guy I think it can gain in three out of the four categories. If there's a market for a guy making a fuck ton of birdies and also missing the cut, EVR. That uh, yeah. he stripes his long irons. He will make an eagle. If there's a market for betting eagles, uh, get Wyndham Clark and EVR on there. Uh, Cam Davis, he's 350 to one. I'm on the record that Cam Davis wins a major in his career. I believe it to my core. He, it's a great course for Cam Davis. 350. He's the only one. bet I've made. <laughs> really? You're Cam on. Cam. You're on Cam. Give me the give the people the Cam Davis why he could win the Masters. Look, Cam Davis is arguably has all the tools to be a top five player in the world. Truthfully. And I am said it with you. I think he picks off a big event when no one's watching. Like no one would be. And at the end of the day, no one would be crazily shocked if Cam Davis won a big event. He is as talented as anyone, and I'm sure the PGA Tour players will say that. Like you, we hear. Uh, I, I think it was Rory or someone talking with Smiley. No, it was Billy Horschel talking about Cam Davis on the Smiley Happy Hour. And he was like, "I'm surprised Cam Davis doesn't win more. This kid is so talented. He's." like six foot five hits the ball a mile and can spike with those long irons and can uh, he's a great chipper and he can get out with the putter and the court golf course makes so much sense and one of the keys to winning the masters is a good major uh, well, yeah that helps too good major finish recently and a previous masters start cam davis was t4 at the pga championship last year at oak hill he checks that like box which not a bunch of guys are going to check especially this far down the board like m- almost none of these guys will cam davis i don't hate it i don't hate it and if he ever wins a major and i'm not on it i'll be really sad so 350 why not just throw him on the card why not i just agree. throw him on the card cam davis he'll he'll probably shoot 80 but he might not so right there he did at the players but bad course hit I feel like we covered a good chunk of the players. Is there anyone who, who didn't get the time of day for you that, that, that's in your mind? No, I'm happy you said Cam Davis because I was going to bring him up. But yeah, I think that that wraps it up. Those those are the, we covered everyone. And uh, I saw, I'll wrap up with this. Also, uh, I didn't say it at the beginning, but like and subscribe uh, to the pod. If you made it this far, I assume you enjoyed it or you hated it so much you wanted to continue to listen to takes so that you can remember the guys that we shit on so that if they win, you can clip it and uh, post it, which I support that as well. But like and subscribe, we really appreciate it. Uh, Somebody, they said in the comments, and it was a fair comment, they're like, could you guys on the pod give out, you know, one of your picks to win? And I, my response to that would be, we go through a lot of the guys and we give our honest feeling about who we're leaning towards and how we feel about it. We don't really place our bets until Tuesday and sometimes for you on Wednesday. And like, those go up on the site. We talk about it in the Discord. They go there. If if there's guys that we bet, like you just said, Cam Davis, like, we'll say those are the guys we bet we just said at this point we're kind of thinking through we're kind of talking through the guys and so i don't want to say i'm betting this guy and then not actually bet him uh but if you do ultimately you know i'm not going to shill the site even though i think the site's awesome if you want to see who we're betting and why we're betting them that's what uh, goes up on the website later in the week yeah if this podcast was on wednesday afternoon it'd probably be a lot different it'd just be us reading our guys and why we pick them but i love the format that we do it in because we're just talking about all the guys and their odds in a very raw format. And we're going to give our honest opinion on each way. And like, yeah, if there's a bet that either of us will make, like we don't mind giving it out at this point. So yeah, I like Cam Davis. So that's all you need to know. That's the official Vince Eric's pod pick to win the masters. (laughs) Cam Davis, 350 to one. Uh, We like him. We started off by saying lock in Scotty at plus 450. Cancel that out. Our pick to win officially. 350 to one cam davis you're gonna see an australian in the green jacket this week matt gannon jurors i know you'll be active on twitter find some stuff from him there get into the discord get to the side excited for this week uh matt we'll talk to you soon peace out thank you for having me